Did you know that using the wrong cable size for your solar panels can waste up to 10% of the energy your panels produce? That's right. You could be throwing away hard-earned solar power every single day just because your cables are too small. But here's the kicker. Oversized cables aren't the solution either. If you pick cables that are unnecessarily large, you'll end up spending way more money than you need to, making your solar installation far more expensive than it should be. The balance between performance and cost comes down to one simple but often overlooked factor, choosing the correct cable size. In this video, I'll guide you step by step through everything you need to know about solar panel cables, from understanding current and voltage to calculating the perfect size for your specific system. By the end, you'll have the knowledge to optimize your cables for maximum efficiency and minimum cost. And trust me, your wallet and your solar panels will thank you. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. Let's start with the basics. Why does cable size matter so much when setting up a solar power system? The cables connecting your solar panels to the rest of the system carry the electricity that your panels produce. If the cables are too thin, they'll resist the flow of current, causing something called voltage drop. This resistance leads to lost energy. And here's the shocking part. Even small losses add up quickly. For example, if you lose 5% of your solar power because of voltage drop, that's like saying goodbye to 5% of your investment every single day. Over time, this could mean hundreds of dollars in lost energy, money that should be powering your home or charging your batteries. On the flip side, going too big isn't ideal either. Larger cables can handle more current, but they're significantly more expensive. If you don't need them, you're just throwing money away on unnecessary material. That's why the sweet spot lies in carefully calculating the cable size to strike the perfect balance between energy efficiency and cost. So, how do you determine the right cable size? There are three key factors to consider. Current, voltage, and cable length. Let's break each one down. First, there's the current, measured in amperes. The amount of current flowing from your solar panels depends on the power output of your system and the voltage. Higher current requires thicker cables to avoid overheating and energy loss. Next we have voltage, measured in volts. Systems with higher voltages like 24V or 48V setups can use smaller cables because they carry less current for the same amount of power. That's why understanding your system's voltage is so crucial. Finally, the cable length plays a massive role in determining size. The longer the cable, the more resistance it creates, which increases voltage drop. For instance, a 10-foot cable might not need to be very thick, but a 50-foot cable carrying the same current will need to be significantly larger to minimize losses. These three factors, current, voltage, and cable length, work together to determine the ideal cable size for your solar setup. Now, let's talk more about voltage drop, the hidden energy thief of solar systems. Voltage drop happens naturally as electricity travels through cables, but if it's too high, you'll lose a noticeable amount of power before it even reaches your charge controller or batteries. For most solar systems, you want to keep voltage drop to less than 3% to ensure optimal efficiency. Anything higher, and you're basically letting your solar power disappear into thin air. Here's an example. Say you have a 200-watt solar panel that outputs 10 amperes of current at 20 volts. If your cable run is long and the cable is too thin, you might lose 2 volts or more from voltage drop. That might not sound like much, but losing 2 volts out of 20 is a 10% energy loss. Instead of sending all 200 watts to your system, you're only getting 180 watts, and that loss happens every hour the sun shines. Over time, it adds up to massive inefficiency and wasted energy. To avoid this, you need to select cables that are thick enough to minimize voltage drop. Thankfully, there's a simple formula you can use to calculate it, which I'll explain in just a moment. All right, let's get to the good stuff. How to calculate the perfect cable size for your solar panels. Don't worry, 
I'll keep this simple and straightforward. Step one is to figure out the current amperes your solar panels produce. To do this, take the total wattage of your solar array and divide it by the system voltage. For example, if you have 400 watts of solar panels and a 12V system, the current is 400 divided by 12, which equals about 33 amperes. Step two is to measure the cable length from your solar panels to the charge controller. Remember to include the full round trip, meaning both the positive and negative cable lengths. For example, if the distance is 20 feet one way, the total cable length is 40 feet. Step three is to use a voltage drop formula to calculate the size of the cable. The formula looks like this. Voltage drop equal current times cable length times resistance divided by a thousand. Don't worry about manually doing this. There are charts and calculators online that will do the heavy lifting for you. These tools let you input your current cable length and acceptable voltage drop, like 3%, and they'll tell you the cable size you need, whether it's 10 AWG, 8 AWG, or even larger. Let me give you a real life example to tie this all together. Imagine you have a 12V system with 400 watts of solar panels producing 33 amperes of current. The distance from your panels to your charge controller is 20 feet one way, or 40 feet total. Using the formula and charts, you'd find that a 6AWG cable keeps the voltage drop under 3%. Now, what happens if you use a thinner 10AWG cable instead? While it's cheaper up front, the voltage drop might increase to 5%, leading to energy losses over time. Those energy losses could easily outweigh the money you saved by choosing the thinner cable. On the other hand, if you go too big and use a 4AWG cable when you don't need it, you'll spend far more than necessary, increasing the cost of your entire solar installation. The lesson here is simple. Choosing the right cable size saves you money both upfront and over the long run while ensuring your solar panels perform at their best. And there you have it. By now, you should have a solid understanding of why cable size matters how to avoid costly voltage drop, and how to calculate the perfect cable size for your solar system. Remember, the goal is to strike that balance between efficiency and cost so you don't lose energy or overspend on cables you don't need. If you're setting up your solar system right now or are planning to upgrade, take the time to calculate the proper cable size. It's one of the most important steps to getting the most out of your solar power. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe for more tips on solar energy and off-grid living, and share this video with anyone who's diving into solar power. If you have questions or need help calculating your system, leave a comment below and I'll do my best to help. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.